Good evening, everyone. Uh, my name is Francois, and I am product manager here at Arturia in charge of the Effect plugin. And uh, today, I'm really happy to introduce you to the latest version of FX Collection. So FX Collection, uh, it's the third revision now of this uh, beautiful suite of audio plugins uh, that, we, that we've launched uh, a few days ago. So currently, it's on promotion at a special offer price of 2.99 uh, euros or dollars. Uh, and it's uh, still running this promotion for 14 days. So without any further ado, I'm going to just quickly introduce you to the newer products uh, in FX Collection. So uh, we've launched uh, in FX Collection this top culture, which is a software recreation of the Thermionic Ultra Vulture. Uh, Dist Open 21, which is a software recreation of the Sans Amp Classic, uh, a classic guitar pedal that turned to be a studio classic used by many artists such as uh, Kurt Cobain or Chad Blake, this kind of, of guys. Uh, we've added also EFX fragments with, uh, with more presets uh, than at its initial launch in February. So now we have 120 presets in EFX fragments. For, so for those of you who, download the, who downloaded the, the software uh, at his initial launch, be sure to make it uh, up to date because those new presets are amazing. And we've also added uh, Tape Melofy, our uh, tape plugin based out of uh, Melotron, which, uh, which is an amazing instrument from the, the 70s. Uh, but aside from these new uh, plugins, we still have all the beautiful ones that we that you already know. Uh, so as I told you, we have here the different uh, categories on our website. So we have these two new distortions. So the Tube Culture uh, Open 21. We have EFX fragments in the in which is classified here uh, with reverse, but also plate 140, which is a, a recreation of a EMC plate intensity. Our own take on an algorithmic reverb. Spring 636, uh, based on a Grandpion Spring Reverb. Tape Melofy, our own tape plugin, as I said. Uh, EQ Citroll, Pre 1973. So many, many different uh, plugins here, delays, modulation and filters, compressors. I'm going to go a bit more in depth uh, in this live stream afterwards. I've prepared a session uh, in, uh, in my DAW to, to show you uh, these different plugins. Uh, and in the end, if you have any question, I will be really happy to, to answer them. So let's go to my session here. Um, so the way I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to present this is uh, I've, I've made this session uh, when I'm going to present uh, mainly Open21, Tube Culture, uh, Tape Nullify, and Fragments in the end. Uh, and, and I just wanted to show you how you can use these different tools to, to enhance your mixes and your production, uh, and, and how these tools were used back then also uh, when they, they were like really high, in a, in a, in a hype position. So, Let's start with Open21. So as I told you, at the, at the very beginning, uh, it was a guitar pedal. Like the Sansom Classic was a guitar pedal. And, and the, the story behind this pedal is very special. Back in the late 80s, people wanted to go on stage without having to carry big half stack uh, amplifiers, such as big Marshall or, or Mesa Boogie or all this kind of stuff. Uh, and the main idea behind this pedal was to simply plug your guitar inside and go straight to the desk so you can play live without having to carry your amplifier. Turns out, th almost yeah, 30 years after that, a lot of people are still using Sans Amp uh, for many different scenarios. Uh, but I thought it was interesting still to go back in time and just uh, show you how it can sound with a, with a regular guitar. So here I have a Telecaster for, uh, for you guitarists out there. Um, I've made two different patches where, uh, uh, where I've applied um, OPM21. So on this uh, track, I'm just using uh, OPM21 as the main distortion. Uh, with the following setting, I'm using uh, the lead mode and, uh, and some character switches. 
Uh, then classic ACDC trick, I'm using an 1176 just to, to give some more punch to the sound. And I'm going straight to a plate reverb uh, with a dry weight around 40%. And I think this setup is quite interesting because it really shows you the very 80s, 90s characters of the Sazam song. <laughs> And just for the record, my guitar is plugged straight into the audio interface. So without any effects, it sounds like this. So you can definitely get this very, very specific. Very, very like tube-esque sound, uh, but, but that is also very characteristic from this, uh, this era. And same goes with uh, the clean sounds. Uh, here, for example, again, I've made a, a small chain that is entirely based uh, out of our FXs. I'm using uh, OPAM21 in a clean setting uh, using the bass mode, uh, which is supposed to emulate an Ampeg Fender-ish amplifier. And, and I have this very beautiful, uh, interesting sound out of the box. So here I have the whole chain. And with a bit of EQ, chorus and delay, I quickly get this very 80s tone. So very cool on guitars, of course. But as you uh, may know, probably, this pedal was also famous for the way it sounds on drums. Uh, so Chad Blake, when he first started to record albums for the Attic Monkeys, for example, he started to use uh, the sans amp a lot uh, on, on drums, on vocals, on keyboards. And it became basically his go-to solution for saturation. The way he uses it on drum is kind of odd uh, because he's running it on a parallel track, uh, on an aux track. So he's blending his drums and then sending it to an aux track using the pedal. And because of the way the pedal sounds uh, with this very guitar character, it's, it really narrows the, the, frequency, the frequency range. Uh, and, and, and you get this kind of like very dirty drums that has basically no more lows and no more highs. Let me illustrate that by bypassing the plugin and showing it to you. So here I have my dry sound. And when I'm introducing OPM21 100% wet, I get this sound. So this way, it's almost unusable. But the way Chad Blake was working back then was just sending a little bit of his drums through this kind of sound and blending it in behind to get this kind of like compression effect that would bring all the room uh, back to the mix, all the small details and rim shots, uh, but very, very slightly. And, and it really helped uh, having some emphasis on the, on the mid-range. So, we've decided to implement uh, a dry wet control that really helps uh, getting this kind of results quickly. So here I've just put um, here OPM21 on, on, uh, on, my, on, my, on my drum bus, basically. It's, it's a drum loop, but it's, it's kind of a drum bus. And, and I'm going to start to introduce a little bit of OPM21 to the mix.
So as you can see, it really helps having this kind of mid-range that, that works really well with this kind of drums. Um, we also added uh, a few additional controls uh, here in the advanced panel. So as you can see, we have the, the main view and then the advanced panel. Uh, we have the curve switch here that uh, de-emphasizes <laughs> the low end before distortion and reapplies uh, some low end after the distortion. So, so it really helps uh, having a cleaner low end uh, when you distort. Uh, a pre-filter, uh, so you just have to move those brackets to, to filter uh, before the distortion, as well as a post-filter uh, that is based on the pool tech EQ. Um, on top of that, uh, one additional feature uh, compared to the original pedal is the addition of this modern mode. So as I told you before, uh, the original pedal really filters the signal. This is the way the, the real pedal works. And thanks to this modern mode, we've really broadened the, the frequency range, uh, so, so it really helps. So here, at about 25%, I think the drums are sounding pretty good. Uh, I'm just going to show you then, with a bass guitar, what it's, uh, how it sounds like. So here I have a very basic DI bass, which doesn't sound really good. So with a bit of compression uh, from our uh, Tube STA compressor and some Open21, it really brings out the character of this bass. So here's the sound with the pedal now. Without. With. So it works really well on bass as well. Uh, as you can hear, uh, again, a lot of uh, bass on the Arctic Monkeys albums were recorded straight into an, uh, a, a sans amp back then. Uh, and, it, and it's still really uh, widely used in studio. Uh, last but not least, I've recorded a couple of guitars. So again, uh, applying only our effects on it. Uh, so here's the final result uh, with Open21 on every track and, and the patches that I've played with my guitar a bit earlier, all together. Without. So as you can hear, it works on really well on many different instruments. Uh, I really uh, encourage you to try Open21, really interesting. Um, at first, it sounds like, oh, OK, just a guitar pedal. No, it's way more than that. Uh, you, can do, you can do a lot of things with it. Uh, and I'm, I'm truly in love with this pedal uh, and with this uh, plugin now. Um, from now on, I'm going to go to Chop Culture. So, uh, Job Culture, as I said earlier, is a software recreation of a famous rack unit from the 90s, 2000s, uh, called the Culture Vulture from Thermionic. Um, in this plugin, so we've decided to, to keep uh, things as simple as possible. So, so we have a drive that includes uh, the, the, the overdrive switch of the original unit. So we have a lot of gain on this drive knob. Uh, bias as on the original unit, four different modes. So this is based, based on the Ultra Vulture. So we have another mode that is even more drastic than the regular Culture Vulture. Uh, it's the one on P2, and I will be happy to, to show it to you later on. Uh, we have automatic gain compensation. So when you, when you crank up the drive, uh, you don't have to worry about the output. Uh, it's not always perfect because of the complexity of the schematics uh, and, and the way it interacts with bias. But it's really, really helpful against staging. And on top of that, we've added a couple of uh, additional features. 
such as input filters, uh, dynamics control, which works, uh, which acts, sorry, as a gate compressor, uh, and an output filter section with a tilt of uh, with a tilt uh, EQ. So again, I've prepared uh, a couple of tracks here. Um, so I have uh, again uh, a, a drum loop here. Uh, I'm just gonna up. So this is how it sounds without job culture. Uh, and now I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to activate the plugin and, and just mess around a little bit with the controls. Um, and you're going to see how it changes the sound, uh, how it just enhances the harmonics, but also how it hacks with dynamics. And it's really interesting. Uh, mind the transient and all these details, you, you will notice a difference. So you've noticed that my mix knob was uh, quite low. Uh, this is how I would usually use uh, tube culture because it can be very, very brittle sometimes. And on drums, it's, it's always good to preserve some dynamics. But if I crank the mix knob all the way up, So you can hear how much gating effect is created sometimes with the P2 and P3 modes. This is why this unit is really, really interesting. Um, it creates, it has so much impact on the dynamics, uh, depending on the incoming material, on, on the amount of like transient you get. It's really fun to play with, uh, especially with signal that contains uh, a lot of transient. And, and the real magic comes when you use the mix knob, as I was uh, doing before is that you can really shape the transient and then just dial back a little bit. And some more mix. Without. And with. So you get this very nice color uh, added to your drums, for example. Uh, what I wanted to show you as well is the is the function of this dynamics knob here. It's really interesting. Um, we took inspiration uh, from like 90s compressor gate uh, rack units, uh, where you just have this like one knob action, and, and it sounds like instantly, I don't know, helpful. Uh, we found it really interesting to have like this kind of like very hard upward compression or gating effect. Uh, so. In addition with the distortion, I'm going to just bring a little bit of it, and you will notice how much of the room is getting back to, the, to, to your ears, uh, and how much of, the, of everything is like slammed thanks to this compression. Or it can act as a gate, as I said. And it becomes really interesting when used in parallel, of course. So yeah, really interesting plugin for sure on drums, but it works, uh, as I said earlier, also on many different sources. On basses, it sounds just really cool. So 
So here I have one instance uh, on my bass guitar. And I'm also going to play you uh, a guitar bus that I've made a bit earlier. So this is the result with Top Culture, but without it. And I'm going to activate it. So it has this very nice color. I'm going to go through the different uh, function, uh, I mean modes here, just for you to hear the difference in dynamics. And here, it sounds almost like a ring modulator. It just changes even the pitch, like the fundamental of the sound is like almost shifted. So yeah, Culture Vulture uh, was famous for being used on, on guitar buses, and, and you can definitely see how it works here. So I'm going to stay conservative and just uh, make you have a listen to, to the whole track together. Without. So yeah, that's it for uh, for Tube Culture. Uh, if you have any questions regarding Tube Culture, of course, uh, please let us know, and I will be happy to answer at the end. Um, I just wanted to go back a little bit uh, on Melofy as well. Uh, so here is Tape Melofy. So I have, again, a few instances, a few tracks with a few instances of various instruments from uh, V Collection, mainly. Um, and each time, I'm using Tape Melofy as a, as a as an effect on them. Um, so Tape Melofy uh, is, is laid out like this. We have no advanced panel on this plugin. It's pretty sp straightforward. We have a preamp section, a tape section, and an output section uh, with a high pass, low pass filter. Um, so I'm going to show you uh, quickly on maybe a Rhodes. Uh, yeah, I have a Rhodes here. Uh, so I'm using stage 73 as my source. Uh, I'm just applying some EQ. I've added some on uh, some of my favorite pro uh, plugin on it, uh, Chorus Dimension D. I really love the way it sounds, especially on the roads. And then I'm using Tape Melofy at the end of the chain just to add a little bit of color and movement to the sound. So here, how, how it sounds uh, with Tape Melofy on top of it. So you can hear the really the color of the preamp, uh, the subtle satur saturation that it's adding. And of course, the flutter movement that you hear on the on the highest part. So I'm going to exaggerate it a little bit and then dial it back so you can hear it clearly. You have the wear control. Of course, the woe. If you want, you can stop it even. It just stops the tape. So very, very fun plugin. A lot of fun to play with. Um, yeah, it works beautifully on roads, uh, usually on organs as well. Uh, 
I found it really interesting to, to give this kind of like really analog texture to, to like simple uh, string sounds, for example. Uh, here I've made a patch with a Solina, so I'm playing exactly the same chords. Uh, it's it's really mixed uh, in in behind, uh, but I'm I'm going. Uh, so yeah, uh, let me just uh, show you the chain that I'm using. So I have a Solina uh, that is playing very basic chords, and I'm using filter M12 just to give some rhythm to it. Some reverb. And at the very end of the chain, I'm going to add tape modify just to get that really crunchy sound. Uh, I'm using the filter here just to get rid of all the unnecessary low frequencies and to help this sound get right into the mix. So yeah, one track, uh, each track, sorry, has its own instance of tape nullify here. On the drums, it works beautifully. I'm adding a lot of drive, some flutter. Here I have a very simple bass line uh, that I've made with a mini V3. So again, tape nullify is adding some dirt and some movement as well. And yeah, as I told, as I showed you before, uh, just one of my favorite thing is just this tape stop function. You can just set uh, a speed of stop, and it just acts in such a beautiful way, in my opinion. This is really a nice way to finish the track or to make a bridge or something. Uh, you can set in advance the, how long you want the stop to be. Um, and yeah, here I've just intensified uh, tape nullify on the whole bus. So it's basically my mix bus for this small demo. And yeah, I can just stop the whole thing uh, just by pressing this. Uh... Yeah, so a lot of fun with this plugin for sure. Be sure to check it out. Um, and to finish, I wanted to go a little bit uh, through Fragments. So Fragments is, uh, is uh, probably the most creative effect from uh, FX Collection. It's a, it's a granular processor. So if you think about granular synthesis, what is granular synthesis? It's, uh, it's basically taking uh, a slice of audio, chopping it in a very, very small slices of audio, and just mangling them to, to get uh, I mean, unpredictable results, if I can say so. Um, what's really interesting with Fragments, it's the fact that uh, it offers various modes. Uh, so we have texture, classic, and rhythmic, uh, which is quite unique to this plugin, as well as some different ways to um, get the audio from the incoming signal. Uh, so here, I've, uh, I'm mainly using um, presets that are included in the factory library. Uh, I just wanted to, to demonstrate to you what it can do in a, in a very basic way, but be sure to check all 120 presets because it's really, really deep and, and, and it, can go, it can do really crazy stuff. Um, so first of all, uh, I have here a very basic uh, DX7 uh, theme, let's say. Uh, and yeah, let me just show it to you uh, without fragments. It sounds like this. And the, the funny thing with fragments is that 
whatever the presets you're going to use, you're going to end up with either a very beautiful result or either something really unpredictable or sometimes really messy, and it's just going to transform the whole audio. So here I'm using this preset called Transient Stretch. So Fragments interface is mainly, uh, mainly uh, focused around this set of parameters. Here you have two macro controls that are mapped on every single preset that is in the factory library. Uh, usually it's called intensity and FX, uh, and you can use them just to tweak the sound of the presets uh, very quickly, uh, just to, to have a quick workflow, you know. Um, here, you have the buffer section, which is really useful to see what exactly is the incoming audio and the way it is captured. Uh, the, the white line represents uh, the, the recording head, while the yellow line represents the, the rec, the uh, playhead. So white line records, yellow line plays the grain. And every single additional yellow line represents a grain, a grain of audio, so a small portion of audio. Uh, in the middle of all these presets, you will find some crazy things. A lot of different presets here. I'm right in the middle of the time stretch section of the plugin. Uh, but yeah, really, really inspiring plugin for sure. Um, I wanted to show you some time stretching on drums, which is a lot of fun with fragments to do. Uh, again, I'm using a, a patch called X4 Stretch. Uh, so here's the, the, the sound without the plugin. And here's the sound with the plugin. So you can do some, some very hard time stretching with fragments. Um, just be sure to, to set a quite high density, short grains, and then just play with the speed and pitch knob, and you can get some crazy effects that will perfectly fit your tracks. Uh, if you use like uh, a, a, a reading speed of uh, 0 0.25 or 0 0.5, for example, it will perfectly fit your tracks. Um, another nice example, I think, uh, is with like very basic chords, uh, how you can just improve the groove and feel of something. Uh, so so here's the loop uh, without fragments and with it. So this is how it works, uh, again, uh, in a very rhythmical way. You can really get these uh, very interesting chords, uh, embellishment, if I can say. 
Um, and to finish, uh, during my live stream for, on Fragments last time, uh, I was asked to play some guitar with Fragments. Some people said it sounds a bit like the microcosm pedal, so I wanted to show you how it sounds live uh, with a guitar. Uh, so here, I'm just using uh, the patch called Waterfall Octave on Fragments and just uh, uh, Logix Amp Simulator. So. So here I'm using uh, yeah the patch as is. Of course, you can go up with density, intensity. Sorry, with FX. And yeah, it's it's very inspirational. If you want to be more more conservative with the octaves, for example, and only go upwards, then just change the direction of the random parameter here. Or of course, you can just, yeah, go the other way around uh, and just Pretty crazy plugin. Uh, we had a lot of fun working on, on this particular product. It was a real challenge, but, uh, but it's definitely something we are really proud of. So, so maybe from now on, uh, we can switch to questions. Um, I, yeah, uh, let, let's switch to question and then uh, we'll, see, uh, we'll, see, we'll see how we how can answer that. So first of all, um, <clears throat> Why do all FX plugins look like hardware on screen except for EFX fragments? Um, so this is a decision we took uh, when we were working on, on fragments uh, to have something different. Uh, of course, you know Arturia for, uh, for its hardware view, uh, the way, I mean, everybody uh, knows us for, for, for our hardware view and, the, and how beautiful they are. For fragments, uh, we wanted something different just to, to be sure that people understand that it's uh, it's really modern and very different. Uh, if I can do an analogy, for example, uh, when we've designed pigments a few years ago, we, we haven't been on the route of doing some hardware view for this product. Uh, we wanted something flat design and, and pleasing to use and, and very easy and, and, and yeah, different in some ways. And this is why we're going in the direction for fragments. And, uh, and yeah, and we've created this EFX line uh, for, especially for for fragments, and uh, and yeah, I think it's uh, it works nicely that way. Um, <clears throat> are there more EFX planned in the area of fragments, more sound design than modeling? Uh, I can't say anything for sure right now. Uh, this is something that I would love to work on uh, actually as a product manager, uh, but. I can't say anything uh, for now. Uh, we've created this line, so it will be filled at some point, but I can't say any dates or anything at the moment. Uh, please tell us if there will ever be iOS versions, uh, even if it's way in the future. I understand all the apps will have to be rebuilt. That's OK. Just wink if it will ever happen. Um, iOS versions, well, so 
We are starting to dig into AU v3. Uh, this is a subject we, we want to dig a little bit more. I don't have any dates at the moment. Uh, I don't know if it will be done or if, uh, if we, or if yeah, any delay uh, currently. But, uh, but I would love to as well. Uh, AU v3 is, is an amazing format for sure. So we'll keep digging and we'll let you know. Uh, any chance to see an integration of FX collection to analog lab in addition to the board effects if you own FX collection? Again, it's not something that, uh, that has been planned. Uh, we're having some other projects uh, that, yeah, probably at some point you will have some more FXs. Like in analog lab, you have the space echo in, in form of a pedal, very simplified. Uh, we've ported some FXs from FX collection to, to analog lab. Uh, yeah, we'll think about adding more in the future. Uh, thank you for, for this uh, suggestion. Um, <clears throat> yeah, I, I have a bunch of questions regarding the color scheme uh, 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 of fragments. This is a decision we, we took uh, when we've designed the plugin. We wanted something that just can stand out of the, of the crowd. Uh, and I think we we managed we've managed to do it in a in a nice way. Uh, I hear people uh, saying that the colors are not uh, their cup of tea. Uh, that said, I mean there are tons of interfaces out there. Some of them I don't like them. I quite like fragments, to be honest. Uh, <clears throat> are we gonna do some themes? Uh, I don't know. It's not uh, on our roadmap at the moment, but uh, if we have some like major uh, ask for 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 uh, themes for fragments, maybe we will consider it for sure. Uh, hit up to our I don't know support team if you if you want that, for example. Uh, another question are all the plugins M1 Apple uh, native as well, uh, and am I using uh, M1 Mac? So uh, since uh, I, yeah since three or four months now, uh, all plugins are M1 native, uh, so don't have to use Rosetta. And currently, I'm running a no uh, uh, Intel i7 uh, Mac MacBook Pro from 2019. Uh, so. As you, as you saw, no issues running all these plugins and all these big chains as well. Uh, one question about fragments, I think, can this also be used set as a reverb only effect? Um, actually, yes, but it's not the, the main purpose. That's say I'm, yeah, let's, uh, let me show you how to do that. Um, so I still have my guitar plugged. Um, so in these FX tabs here, you have, uh, you have two different slots. You can choose from these different uh, effects uh, that are directly uh, from pigments and, and V-collection and all that, uh, and put pretty much every effect in the chain uh, as you want. Uh, be sure to watch the, the whole tutorial about fragments if you want to know more about that. But here, I'm using a delay and a reverb uh, on top of the granular engine. So you will pretty much always get uh, so, some grains in the way, but if you have like a conservative size and density, well, you pretty much get your results, uh, like your dry signal only. And then you can use uh, fragments as a reverb. This is a way of using it. Uh, my favorite way of using it is, when I do that is to do some granular reverb. What I mean by that is just having some very, very tiny grains um, and uh, with a very high density. Like this, uh, just a bit of, of, uh, of random fine and maybe some pitching up an octave. and then put some more reverb on it. And it works really nicely on, uh, on vocals, for example. You just uh, put fragments on, a, on an aux track and just blend it a little bit underneath your vocals. It works really, really well. 
uh, on roads as well, guitars, of course, uh, on many different sources. It's, it's really interesting. Uh, Fragments is really one of a kind. Uh, it's crazy the, the amount of things you can do with it. Um, it's, it's very, very modular in terms of uh, modulations as well. Uh, with the function generators, the envelope follower, the step sequencer, it's, it, it's really an interesting product. Uh, I really recommend you to, to go and have a look at it. Um, any news on clap formats? Um, at the moment, uh, I don't really know. This is more a technical question. I'm, I'm not super, uh, super uh, aware of all these topics. Uh, Again, this is probably a question more for uh, our Austria forum or for the support team, uh, but I, I can't really tell you more about that at the moment. Um, do you plan to add some famous channel strip to the FX collection in the future? Um, this is something, again, we are considering. Um, the thing is, at the moment, uh, we already have quite, quite uh, enough to make channel strip of your own in FX collection, uh, but having it in in a yeah in all in one format can be really useful. That said, if you use for example um, pre uh, 1973, which is based on a very very famous preamp, I, I'm not gonna explain too much about that. Uh, then a good compressor, uh, yeah, you'll pretty much have a channel strip, an entire channel strip. Um, these are, yeah, these are really interesting. The, the way uh, it saturates uh, the, the signal and, and the sweet spots are all over the place using these preamps. Uh, again, really recommend you to, to check them out. Uh, is Arturia thinking about GPU to be used for effect calculation? A lot of process power there, uh, like GPU audio. Again, technical question. I'm not really aware of that. Um, I would say, yeah. I'm not sure about that. Uh, I don't want to, to, to answer you with any, uh, any stupid answer. Uh, I, I have no clue. Um, yeah, so I think we're done with the questions. Uh, yeah, I really hope you enjoyed this live stream. Uh, my name is Francois, as I said. Uh, I was really happy to introduce you to, to FX Collection. Be sure to check out uh, the promotion on our website. Uh, you still have a few days to, to get uh, FX Collection 3 at a promo price of $2.99. Uh, and yeah, see you later. Bye.